So the Russian Su-57 is back in the news, and this time they're modernizing it. Let's take a look at some of the new features that are proposed for the Su-57 Felon. All right, so RU Aviation is reporting that the Su-57 modernization includes three axis flat nozzle and helmet-mounted target designation system. The second stage engine with a flat nozzle control thrust vector with a Su-57 fighter known as Product 30 or AL-51F1 is undergoing flight tests on a prototype aircraft with the flight number 052 pac fa t 50 2 which, again, people are always quick to point out Su-57 versus the T-50, but one is a prototype for the other. I mean, they have to test it before it becomes production. So uh, eventually, we'll make it to the Su-57 if this is successful. So the engineering approach for the Su-57 implies modularity of its design, which makes it possible to quickly replace various components, including the propulsion system. The director of the Sukhoi Design Bureau, chief designer of Su-57, noted, it may be equipped with a new flat nozzle engine, which will significantly improve their combat performance, also reduce the fighter's visibility in the rear hemisphere. And that's that's something we've talked about in the past with the round nozzles. It The radar cross-section is obviously bigger. The IR plume, infrared plume, bigger. Uh, easier target, easier to lock on with an infrared missile. So they're doing the same thing that the F-22 does, which is hiding that IR signature and kind of streamlining the RCS in the rear, rear hemisphere. The difference, though, is the F-22 is two-dimensional thrust vectoring. This is three-dimensional. So I'm interested to see how that plays into complexity, right? Because the more complex you make something, the more likely it is to break. But if it's designed well and few moving parts, it may be a very good design that they have few problems with. And there you go. Flat nozzle is a complex, like I said, that's things that, are t that tend to break. Metal composite construction, unlike asymmetric nozzles, the flat nozzles used on aircraft to create new possibilities, including low visibility in the radar range due to the shape, also retaining the maneuvering capabilities. In essence, it complements the existing aerodynamic controls, creation of mo moments in three planes. Yeah, so now they have pitch, roll, and track control, which we've seen that in the wild maneuvering that the Su-57 has done in its demos. Uh, and then the documentary Top Gun Maverick. On the foreign market, the F-22 has similar solutions. However, it's only vertical, not three-dimensional. Uh, this is something they've started since the Yak-41. And it's also been in some of the later uh, Su series. Su-35, I think, is three-dimensional thrust vectoring. In addition to that, and this is the thing I think that's probably going to be the biggest... I didn't know they didn't already have this. So in addition to the second stage engine, they're also looking at a helmet-mounted queuing system, which I'm surprised it didn't have that because the Russians were kind of the first on the market with a helmet. I mean, it was a rudimentary design the very first helmet was just the little monocle for targeting a high off bore sight missile with the Archer, but they were first. I mean, and they did really well with it. Obviously, now we've got Jehemex, we've got the electro optical system of the F 35, but it's surprising to me that it's taken this long for them to get to this point. But they're saying that uh, it's being developed specifically for the Su-57 will allow the pilot to receive information about the aircraft status, combat situation, speed, altitude, distance, target, which is standard. This is not what the F-35 has, at least according to this article. This is more of a Jehemix, where it just gives you the information, targeting, all that stuff. Uh, Jehemix being helmet-mounted queuing systems. According to Dimitri, head of the Opto-Electronic Systems Department of the Sukhoi Design Bureau, a missile with an infrared homing head captures a target. The aiming marker will change. You'll know the target has been acquired. Yeah, that's standard Jehemix stuff. So that's... The fact that it's taken this long is very surprising, but from a practical perspective, the F-22 does not have a helmet. So that's not uncommon with these fifth-gen fighters that have high maneuverability because the biggest thing with the helmet, number one, situational awareness is improved greatly because you can look out, use a data link, see your wingman, you can see what the radar is targeting, you can see what your wingman is targeting, like you can get a picture just by looking outside. And the more time you spend looking outside, the better your situational awareness is. That's one. Two, though, is weapon queuing. 
if you use the helmet in air to air, you can use high off bore sight capabilities of missiles and not necessarily have your nose pointed at them because you can look, target, shoot, which is very dangerous, especially when you've got an aircraft as maneuverable as a Su-57. For air to ground stuff, very useful. A-10s have it. Uh, they have a uh, hog eye or pig eye or whatever they call it, the scorpion helmet. And that is great because you can look down, designate a target or see the target, see the friendlies on the ground and then know not to hit the friendlies and know where the target is, roll in on the target, designate, all that stuff. So helmets are huge in the modern battlefield. It says right now the helmet with target designation system is now undergoing flight tests. Um, we see the aircraft as a platform for, for at least 50 years to fulfill its tasks, including gradual introduction of next-gen technologies, essential turning the aircraft from 5 to 5 plus. I would argue that some of that is actually Gen 4. Helmets are Gen 4. That's not five, that's maybe 4.5. The hiding the nozzles is should be standard Gen 5. So we're really not talking 5 plus yet. Unless there's some technology hidden behind all this stuff that they're not talking about, which is very possible. Russians aren't going to give away their secrets, just like we're not going to give away our secrets. It's standard. But overall, I do think this is a great improvement for a really good aircraft in general. We've talked about the rivet stuff that's not present in the production aircraft. I think the production aircraft are better than the T-50, the Pac-50, the prototype versions. However, you know, it's, it's like any other aircraft. You're going to want to develop them and keep modernizing them as you can. I wish we'd still be building F-22s and continuing to improve. They are improving the F-22 that exists, but it'd be nice to be building new F-22s because that's a cool airplane that has a lot of capability. But we don't. They do. Uh, we'll see how it plays out in the battlefield. Haven't seen a lot of real-world application of the Su-57, just a few isolated incidents, but uh, we'll see how they employ it in the future. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.